Hey friends, my name is Z and you're watching He Makes It Easy. And welcome to a new video for IGCC at Madison today. We have rules and examples for higher derivatives and applications. And we'll start off with some basics for the notation. But before you get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And we'll get right into some basics. So number one, we have to know what higher derivative means. So like higher derivatives or the second derivative means that you differentiate a function twice. Like the derivative, derivative twice. So the first derivative will be dy over dx or like y prime. And the second derivative will be d over dx times by dy over dx, which gets us d square y over dx square or y double prime. So like uh, I have the notation here, like f of x to differentiate it once to become f prime x and differentiate it again to become f double prime x. So since we know that dy over dx, like um, dy over dx is the first derivative, we know that it's the gradient function to describe the curve at any particular point. d square y over dx square will be like the gradient function to describe the gradient function. And it will be useful in determining whether a point, like a turning point, is a maximum point or a minimum point. Then we'll look in some basics for the test for higher derivatives. So the second derivative test of stationary point to, is to like use to test if the stationary point is a minimum or a maximum point as I mentioned. So if d squared y over dx squared is bigger than zero, it means that a stationary point is a minimum point. Because imagine the gradient to describe the gradient function is positive, so the curve before the point is, is like a negative gradient, and the curve after the point is a positive gradient. So this, to describe what I mean is that when we have like a quadratic graph right here, this one right here it will be a minimum point because it's obviously the minimum point of the whole curve. And for the dy over dx the gradient function, it will be zero. And we, if we use d squared y over dx squared, like the gradient function to describe the gradient function, we can see that it's decreasing, a normal uh, decreasing, and stationary and increasing. So the overall gradient is increasing because it's like going up at the end. So it is a minimum a minimum point when the gradient function is bigger than zero. And the opposite is true for when the gradient function is less than zero. It will be a, a maximum point. Like imagine the gradient to describe the gradient function is negative. So the curve before the point is a positive gradient and the curve or like the like the point or the curve, the line, after the max the maximum point is negative. So let's say we have a, like a curve here, a quadratic curve. This one here will be the maximum point. So the gradient function will be dy over dx will be zero because it's a stationary point. And to look at the overall gradient, you can see that this point right here, the gradient is increasing, then stationary, and decreasing. So the overall gradient is decreasing, right? As you can see, it's decreasing from here to here. So we know that if the second derivative test is, ne uh, is negative, it will be a maximum point. And if d squared y over dx squared equals zero, there's nothing really to conclude because you have to draw the graph out and we have to consider the gradient before and after because it could be like a point of inflection. Then we have another way to test if it's a minimum point or a maximum point. So let's say if we have a function f of x equals 3x squared plus 2x, differentiating, uh, differentiate it, we get 6x plus 2. Solving it, we'll get a stationary point of minus 1 over 3 and minus 1 over 3. And then we can put minus 1 over 3 into the gradient function right here. And it will be 0 because it is a stationary point. Plus the, um, the function, this point right here will be the min uh, minimum point. And then that means that there will be, it will have a gradient of 0. And so basically you substitute a number before the x value of the stationary point and the number after the x value for the stationary point to conclude the gradient. So for example, when we have the point minus 1 over 3, the point before min uh, minus 1 over 3 will be minus 2 over 3, and the point after will be 0, right? Because this right here will, be, will have a, a gradient of 0, and if this point right here were to have a gradient of like a positive gradient, and if this point right here were to have a gradient of a negative, you can see that the, the gradient is going negative, 0, and positive. This means that the second derivative test will be a positive and therefore it is a minimum point. I see it right here. You can see that this is a negative and this is a positive. 
That means that the gradient before the point is negative and the gradient after the point is positive, meaning the point is a minimum point. Then we have some examples. So the curve has an equation of y equals 3x minus x cubed for x is bigger than or equal to 0. Find dy and ds and find the stationary point. So we have y equals 3x minus x cubed. Differentiate, oops, x cubed. Differentiating it, dy over dx will get us 3 minus 3x squared. And then you just solve for x, like x squared, oops, x squared equals 1. And therefore, x equals 1 and x equals minus 1. So you just have to put it into the original equation to find the stationary point. Oops, so when x is 1, you have a y. And when x is minus 1, it will be the opposite, which is the opposite sign. So 3 times 1 minus 1 cubed will be equal to 3 times 1 is 3 minus 1. Oops. 3 minus 1 will be 2. So the first one will be 1, 2. And then the second point, 3 times minus 1 minus minus 1 cubed will be minus 3 and plus, oops, will be minus 3 plus 1, which gives us minus 2. So it will be minus 2 like minus 1 and minus 2, so that's the two stationary points. And B, show that dy over dx changes sign from positive to negative as x increases through 1. So basically what you have to do is that you have to choose, because we know that it's increasing through 1, we'll just focus on this point right here, so 1, 2, like so. So if you do dy over dx, you can see that it's equal to 3 minus 3x three uh, three squared, so this question basically asks to look at the point before and after 1 to show that the, the, gradient, fun the gradient is increasing from positive to negative, sorry, like decreasing from positive to negative. So let's say the point x equals 1, right? The point before it we can choose to be 1 over 2, and the point after it we can choose to be 3 over 2, because this is basically 2 over 2. So let's just rub it out here dy over dx, dy over dx equals 3 minus 3x squared. So when, when x is equal to 1 over 2, we can put into our calculator 3 minus 3 times 1 over 2 squared, and that will be equal to, the gradient function will be equal to 9 over 4, like so. But if x were to be 3 over 2, the point after, we can put into our calculator 3 minus 3 times 3 over 2 uh, squared will be minus 15 over 4. So we can see that the gradient the gradient is, is from is going from positive to negative, as you can see here, positive to negative as x increases through 1. So that's the answer. Then we have the quadratic curve has an equation of y equals 81x minus 23 minus 3x cubed. Find the turning point. So we have y equals 81x minus 23, minus 3x cubed. Differentiating it, we get dy over dx will be equal to 81 minus 9x squared. And solving for x, we get x squared equals 9, and therefore x equals plus or minus 3. Like so. So we can just use this to find um, the, the stationary point, and therefore there will be a 3 in something, and minus 3 in something. And we can put 3 back into the original equation, 81 times 3 minus 23, minus 3 times 3 cubed. So they will get us 139. And the other one will be minus 139, like so. So these two are the turning points or the stationary points. And determine the nature of the turning points using higher derivatives. So we sit here using higher derivatives so we can't use the point before and after, right? So we know dy over dx, dy over dx will be equal to 81 minus 9x squared. Therefore, d squared y over dx squared will be equal to 81, oh, sorry, no, it will be minus, it will equal to minus um, 18x. Like so. So we can substitute the different x values right here, 3 and minus 3, to, to, de to like determine if it's a turning, it's like a maximum turning point or a minimum point. So let me just, let me just use new, a new color. So the point 3, minus 1, oops, 3 and 1, 3, 9, 
As you can see, because x is a, like, a, like a positive number and that's a negative, that means that the, um, it will be a negative gradient. So we know that the second derivative test is a negative, and we know that this means it's a maximum point, because what it is is that the, basically the, the overall gradient change on that point right there is a negative. That means it will go from positive to negative. So this will be a maximum point. So maximum point, therefore, oops, minus 3 and minus 139 will be a, a minimum point. Because we can use the, um, the same method from just now. If it were to be a negative uh, x value, it would be minus 18 times minus 3 will be a positive value. That means that the overall gradient will be positive. That means that it will go from the negative, neutral, or like zero to positive. So it will be a minimum point. So these two are the answers, and that's it. And this is for this short video for the rules and examples for higher derivatives and applications. And I hope you will find it useful and helpful. And if you did, Please hit the like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my website, you can drop them off in the comment section and I'll reply to them, or you can email me. And check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or Instagram or YouTube. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check my website in the description, or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemilseeasy.com. And I hope you all find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be questions for higher derivatives and applications. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.